couple of years ago, I had an accident while I was kite surfing and I snapped one of the ligaments and did some serious damage to the cartilage in my knee. And this meant that I couldn't walk very easily. I was on crutches, I couldn't do any of the sports that I love. So they said that I could have an operation to reconstruct the ligaments in my knee. Now up until a few years ago, this operation would have involved a stay in hospital overnight, some serious scarring, but now they use this thing called keyhole surgery. I was in and out in about five hours and I can now run, play sports, and do everything that I was doing before. It's amazing. I'm so grateful to the medical profession for the way they help me, but also for my body, the way it heals itself as well. Now, all healing is ultimately from God, whether it's the medical staff using their God-given skills or the natural healing processes of the body. There have been huge advances in medicine. You know, life expectancy has more than doubled in the last 100 years. And yet, for all these advances, you look around the world and there is so much pain and sickness. And at some point in all of our lives, we come across illness or disease, whether it's ourselves or friends or family. And at that point, it's only natural to ask the question, does God heal today? I hope so, I think so. Just because I've never seen it doesn't mean it doesn't exist. It could, I mean, there's, there's been a lot of medical miracles. I mean, God has healed me. Still to this day, the doctors don't know what happened. Like, they, they ran tests, he healed me. Maybe sometime less physical, but maybe he'll change your, your, um, your thought process around like what you're dealing with. Yeah, I believe in miracles. Miracles, of course, they happen every day. Absolutely. I do, who does? We beat Russia in that hockey game, so. It must be real. Um, I'm still here. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. I do believe in miracles. I believe in fate. I believe in things that are supposed to happen. Yeah. Yeah. I believe 100%. in that. I don't know. I don't. No, not really. I think we 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 all destiny in our own hands. Yeah. Definitely, they happen. Because yeah. I want I want to believe in it. I don't believe in miracles, but I do believe in destiny. I guess I less believe in miracles, and I just kind of believe that everything happens how it's supposed to. I mean, anything is possible. Before I was a Christian, if you'd asked me the question, does God heal today? I'd have said that's a non-question. I don't even believe there's a God. And if there is a God, why on earth would he heal one person when there are millions of people out there who are not healed? Even after I became a Christian, and I read the New Testament, I read about Jesus healing people, the disciples healing people. I thought, yeah, okay, that happened in the past, but we wouldn't expect that to happen today. Then back in May 1982, a man called John Wimber came to speak at our church. John Wimber was an American pastor, pastor of the Vineyard Church. He'd been a, a rock musician, an amazing guy, and he came to preach here on a Sunday night from the pulpit there. I was sitting over there, uh, I, was, I was a rather cynical about this whole subject of healing, but amazing things happened that night. The following night, we met in a room called The Spring, which is a room down there, and uh, which holds about a, a hundred people. And we had the sort of leaders of the church came. We're a much smaller church in those days, but there were about 60 or 70 leaders meeting in the spring downstairs. And John Wimber spoke about this whole subject of healing. And we were, we were fine with that, but then he said at the end of the talk, now we're going to have some coffee, and when we come back after coffee, we're going to do healing. Well, none of us had ever done healing before. <laughs> So we had a very long coffee break. <laughs> and when we came back after coffee, the people who'd been at the front felt it would be selfish to stay at the front, so they went, <laughs> they went right to the back. And uh, John said that he and his team had been praying, and they had various words of knowledge. And he, he explained that a word of knowledge is something that doesn't come to your natural mind. It's something that's revealed by a supernatural revelation. It could be uh, an impression, a a picture, a, some, a sort of sympathy pain, or something like that. And he said that there were uh, 12 of these. And then he read them out. And, and then he asked the people one by one to come down. The first one, I remember, was a man who had injured his back 
chopping wood with an axe at the age of 14. We thought, oh, there's not going to be anybody like that. And this guy got up and he came down to the front. And then one after another, very good friend of ours, Jeremy, uh, there was a word of knowledge about his back and he came forward and he received healing that night. Eventually there was only one of those 12 words that had not been responded to. One of them was, there is a woman here who's not able to conceive. And we're British, and it was a long time ago when we really didn't talk about those things in public. And I thought, no one is going to come forward for that. But he kept waiting. And eventually, this friend of ours, young woman, got up and came forward. We didn't even know that she was struggling to conceive. But he prayed for her that night. The team prayed for her. And nine months later, she gave birth to a baby boy, although conception didn't take place in the spring. <laughs> <laughs> and since then, uh, our good friends Ed and Sarah have had five children. And I began to look at this whole subject of healing in a different way. There's a verse in the Old Testament that says, I am the Lord who heals you. It's in God's nature to heal. God loves you and he wants you to thrive and experience wholeness. The word Jesus actually means saviour. The Greek word for save is sozo. It's an interesting word because it can mean I save. Jesus came to save us from our sins, to bring us forgiveness. But the same word also means I heal. Jesus came to bind up the brokenhearted. And God loves to heal, and he wants to use you and me to bring healing to those around us. And you are never more like God than when you are helping hurting people by wiping away their tears, helping the brokenhearted and lifting up the fallen. The Bible says our words can bring healing. Yeah, with your words you can bring healing to division, you can bring peace, encouragement, forgiveness. Most of the hurt that we experience in life comes from relationships, and actually so does most of our healing. Healing comes from our relationship with God and our relationships with other people. But when the Bible is talking about healing, it's not just talking about emotional, psychological and spiritual health. There's also physical healing. 25% of the Gospels are taken up with the healing miracles of Jesus. In Matthew's Gospel, we catch a glimpse of the compassion that Jesus had for people. Jesus went throughout Galilee, teaching in the synagogues, preaching the good news of the kingdom and healing every disease and sickness among the people. But it wasn't just Jesus. Jesus gave authority to his followers, so to you and to me, to tell others the good news and to heal the sick. And it's not just for certain special people, this is for every single Christian. Jesus sent to his apostles always telling them, preach the kingdom and heal the sick. Um, so praying for the sick people is a part of our ministry. Uh, some people uh, have a special gift, but uh, everybody can pray for, the, for sick people. Nowadays, of course, we, medicine, uh, science uh, comes to help in many, many respects. And this is uh, also a way uh, for God to, to come to our help. But nevertheless, people need prayer because there are many situations where medicine has nothing to say. And we are supposed to give hope to these persons in any situation, in any situation, because there is nothing impossible for God. And giving a person hope is sometimes is the best remedy to illnesses. We see in the book of Acts that Jesus' followers went around healing people. And as you look at church history, all the way down the centuries, that's what we see. And still today, God is healing people. It was a Friday night, and I remember in the middle of the night waking up and being quite delirious, literally spilling a glass of water in my bedroom, uh, trying to make it to the bathroom because I was going to be ill, and just not even understanding what was going on. And it was quite scary, actually. And I remember waiting till the next morning before I said to my husband, I think I should go to the hospital. I didn't realize when I went into the hospital, I would not be coming out for quite some time. I remember the doctor coming in to me and being quite severe looking, you know, very sort of serious about what he had to tell me. 
And he went on to tell me that I have something called fungal meningitis, and the form of it is actually called Cryptococcus gatii. And it was as strange as it sounded. A fungal ball had already um, started to grow on my brain. It was 1.3 centimeters at the base of my brain stem, and it was um, replicating itself at a really high rate. And that's the danger with this particular disease, is that uh, it gets to a point where it's big enough, which is three centimeters, that they, the only way to get rid of it is to have surgery on your brain, and no one wants that. And they told me not only would I be in the hospital for eight weeks, I would be on antifungals for two years after that. For the first three nights, I would find myself late at night at about 11 o'clock, um, lying in my hospital bed, and I would just have panic attacks. I was actually having a deeply physical response to um, this knowledge that I could die. Lots of people were praying for me, lots and lots of people. And uh, I was so grateful for their prayers. I was grateful for the wonderful medical care I had. But I remember on Friday, and it happened to be Easter weekend, so Good Friday, my minister from my church offered to come in and pray with us, and we accepted that invitation. And he came and he prayed for me and he said, I think God may want to heal you. And so it was a Friday afternoon that he prayed for me and I was scheduled for an MRI on the Tuesday following. I feel like I had very little faith for miraculous healing. It's not because I didn't believe it was possible, I just thought it would probably happen for other people. It would never happen to little old me in Vancouver. I went into the MRI machine and the next day I got the results. And I don't think I will ever forget the day and I can see the doctor's face rushing into our room and saying, are you ready to go home? And Ryan and I were quite confused. You know, we'd sort of set ourselves up for we're here for eight weeks. It was at five and a half weeks. And we said, yes, why? And he said, has no one given you your MRI results? We said, no, nobody's come in yet. He said, we can't find it. And I said, what do you mean you can't find it? He said, your fungal ball has completely disappeared. I can't find a trace of it. It's as if it never existed. And I said, not even the little scar on my brain? He said, nothing. It's completely gone. You can go home today. And I remember the moment, because my husband just fell into my lap, laughing, crying. I was laughing. And I said to this doctor, who I don't believe had a Christian faith like I did, I said to him, I believe God healed me. He kind of shrugged and said, I don't have an explanation. And literally, I went home that day. I have never known that kind of joy. But also, I also know that I've never experienced that depth of gratitude. Of course, not everybody gets healed. I think of a very good friend of ours, Patrick Pearson Miles. Patrick has total kidney failure. He had a kidney transplant and it didn't work. He's been on dialysis now for 25 years. No one has more faith in the area of healing than Patrick. Patrick has prayed for so many people and many people have been healed. But he himself has not been healed. Although we prayed for him so much. But I found what Patrick says is really encouraging. He says this, I have received the greatest gift, which is eternal life. If I get healed, that will be a bonus. When Jesus sent his disciples out and when he taught, he spoke a lot about the kingdom of God. He said, heal the sick who are there and tell them the kingdom of God is near you. The kingdom is God's sphere of influence. And one day, God's sphere of influence will be complete when Jesus returns. There are over 300 references in the New Testament to the second coming of Jesus. And when Jesus returns, everyone's going to be healed. There'll be no more sickness, no more suffering, no more pain. God's kingdom will be complete. But right now, that's not the case. We live in between the times where we're awaiting Jesus' return. And right now, not everybody is healed. The way that Paul puts it is like this. He says, right now we're groaning inwardly because we're waiting for the redemption of our bodies. That's only going to happen in the future when Jesus returns. It will be the total redemption of our bodies 
total healing. But what Jesus says is this. There is a future kingdom, but there's a present aspect to it right now. You can experience a foretaste of what will come in the future. Sometimes in England, after a long cold winter, we get a few really warm days in early spring when it stops raining, the sun comes out, and it feels like summer. And suddenly everyone's in shorts and t-shirts, but summer has not arrived. The next week it's freezing cold again. What we experience there is a foretaste of summer. It tells us that summer is coming. But when Jesus healed people, it was like a foretaste of the future. It tells you that one day everybody is going to be healed but right now not everyone is healed. So what about healing today? Well, if God calls you into the medical profession, then that is an amazing calling. If you look at the roots of hospitals, they often go back to Christian institutions, set up in the belief that people matter to God because they are made in his image. And God often heals people in ways that we can explain, like through the advances in medical science. But sometimes he heals people directly in ways that we can't explain. So we shouldn't stop praying especially when the medical profession can't do any more. One time I got a call to go to the Brompton Hospital where I was the assistant chaplain. Actually, when I got the call, I was on the squash court and it was quite urgent, so I rushed to the hospital in my squash gear with my squash racket still in my hand. And when I arrived, I met the person who'd asked me to go, a, a mother called Vivian. And at first of all, Vivian was a bit surprised to see a vicar in squash gear. It took me a little bit of time to persuade her that I actually was a vicar, but when she was convinced, she asked me to go and pray for this little boy. She was a mother of three children, and she was pregnant with her fourth. The third child, Craig, he was 18 months old, and he had a hole in his heart. He'd been operated on, but it had been unsuccessful, so the doctor said that there was no hope for him. He was on life support, and three times they'd asked for her permission to switch the machine off and let him die. The mother wasn't a Christian, but she said, I want to try one last thing. I want to get someone to pray for him. So that's why I've been called. I went into the room, he had tubes all over his body, and I prayed for him in the name of Jesus to be healed. And then I went to chat to Vivian and talked to her a little bit about faith. And there in the hospital, she gave her life to Jesus Christ. Two days later, I went back into the hospital to see how he's getting on, and she came running up to me, so excited. She said, after you prayed, Craig turned the corner, and he's recovered. He was healed of that heart condition. Now, that was not a placebo effect or the power of positive thinking. There's no way it could have been auto-suggestion. He was just a baby. That was 27 years ago. Today, Craig is still going strong, kept in touch with the family all these years and he's the glue in that family, a remarkable young man. She said to me afterwards, I didn't believe, but I do believe now. Of course, I've also prayed for lots of people who haven't been healed. But as John Wimber used to say, when we prayed for no one, no one was healed. Now we pray for lots of people, some are healed. As a child, I played a lot of basketball and I think that's where the problem with my knee started and it became worse after joining the Royal Marines. The tendons were, were, were ripped, the ligaments were ripped, and as a result, my kneecap was sort of free-floating in my leg, as it were. I couldn't walk for a long period of time, I couldn't sit for a long period of time, and in itself, running was completely out of the question. I got a U-turn when I came to Alpha. I was, I was invited, reluctantly accepted, I must highlight. You know, very cynical about the entire thing. And then a chap said he had a word of knowledge about this young man who has this knee problem. And it's been ongoing for a long time, he needs to get it sorted. And he, if he wants prayer, he can raise his hand. And I thought, oh my goodness, this is me. Who's, who told him about it? Who told him about my knee? And I cautiously raised my hand to my ear, just, just the height. And two, two guys came over and said, do you want to go on prayer? I said, yes. And I said, I'm, I'm the knee guy. Yeah, you can say so you could pray, and I really appreciate that. And they started praying for me and uh, placed his hand on my knee. And just 30 seconds, 45 seconds into prayer, there was this warmth in my knee. And then there was a tingling, which is a bit ticklish, so I started laughing. And at, at the end of the prayer, there was a slight difference. I could, I could sense there was a change. But I wanted to make, make, make sure that actually it is good to go. So I told them, step back, I need to test this. 
I absolutely just, just landed on my knees very heavily, like boom on the, on the ground and there was no pain. I just couldn't believe it that after such a long period where I've been to top doctors, top physiotherapists in the armed forces trying to get this sorted, you know, and within three to five minutes, it's all gone. So the next day I went for a six mile run and in the end I felt absolutely fine. How do we pray for healing? Well, it's God who heals and not us. So there's no need for hype or shouting, there's no technique involved. And we treat people with dignity and respect. And if they're not healed, don't tell them that it's their fault or that God doesn't love them or that God's punishing them. Jesus always prayed with love and compassion. That was his motive and it should be ours too. And one of the things we've found really helpful is words of knowledge. Ask God, will you show me? And it might be through a picture or an impression that you have. Sometimes you might even experience a sympathy pain. Mm, but it can feel very vulnerable both giving out these words of knowledge and responding to them. But it's been said that faith is spelt R-I-S-K. So sometimes you need to step out of your comfort zone. And when it comes to praying for someone for healing, there's always a simple model that you can use. Just check with the person whether it's okay to place your hand on their shoulder or the place that hurts where appropriate, and then pray in Jesus' name and ask the Holy Spirit to come. And sometimes you'll need to pray more than once. Jesus prayed for a man who was blind and he said to him afterwards, can you see? And the man replied, it looks like trees walking. So Jesus prayed again. And this time the man could see clearly. So don't give up. And even if you're not healed, prayer is a great blessing. So when John Wimber first spoke here on a Sunday night in 1982, the following night we all met in church house over there. And again he spoke on healing and again there were words of knowledge. And I was working as a barrister at the time. I was in my pinstripe suit, stiff white collar, and I was sitting in the front row so I could observe everything in great detail. And he said, uh, there is, um, there are, this is my recollection of it, he said there are 10 people here with athlete's foot. <laughs> now, I had athlete's foot, but I was not going to admit to that in, <laughs> in front of all those people, or at all. Uh, and then he said, would, the, would those people like to stand, because we'd like to pray for them? Well, one by one, they stood until there were nine people standing. <laughs> I still was not going to stand. But my wife, Pippa, was sitting next to me and she was going, that is you. And I was saying, no, 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 no. Somebody else. <laughs> but eventually the bruising in my ribs was getting such that I felt it would be easier, otherwise I need to be prayed for for that as well, <laughs> to stand and to sit down. So I stood and um, uh, one of these very nice Americans came over to me and said, um, would you like us to pray for your, your athlete's foot? I said, no, 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 thank you very much. <laughs> I said, um, actually, I quite like having athlete's foot. <laughs> it's so satisfying when you kind of rub it like that. <laughs> so he was very gracious, and he said to me, um, well, what would you like to pray for? So I said, I'd like to pray for Pa in my ministry. So he said, okay, well, we'll pray for you. And they just prayed for the Spirit to come upon me. And after a few minutes, all I can say is I experienced something like 10,000 volts going through my body. Extraordinary power of God coming. And he, he had a fairly limited prayer, this, this, this man. Um, he just said, um, more power every time. <laughs> it was the only thing he ever prayed. I can't remember him ever praying anything else. And it, there reached a point where I could take it no longer, and I started saying, no more, pa. <laughs> but that didn't seem to put him off at all. He was, he was saying more, pa, and I was saying no more, pa. And eventually there was a kind of, almost a shouting match going on between us. So John Wimber, who had been obviously used to rowdy people at some of his meetings, said, uh, oh, oh, could you take that one out through them? So they carried me out, because I couldn't move. Uh, they carried me out through those French windows, and they carried me around. And out, as I was going out through the windows, I remember John Wimber saying, God is giving that person the gift of being able to tell other people about Jesus. I've often looked back to that moment because it was a very significant moment in my life. As it happened, I wasn't healed of athlete's foot at that moment, although it has cleared up since then. But I'm so glad that I was prayed for because it was an amazing experience. 
And since then, Pippa and I have tried to tell people about Jesus and to bring healing wherever we can. I try to pray for people like I was prayed for because I believe that God uses us today to heal people. He wants to use you to heal people. I encourage you to be someone who brings healing in your family, among your friends, in your workplace, in your community. Praise for the sick, binds up the brokenhearted, wipes away people's tears, lifts up the fallen, breaks down division, and brings healing wherever you go. In Jesus' name.